Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel for a new video. I wasn't actually planning on doing a video today. I'm currently in the process of setting up my drum set and my microphones to do some session work. I'm working with a few clients throughout this week, so I'm gonna be tracking a lot of drums, and I'm in the first day of tracking today. Today, I will be playing over one of Wake Up Hate's new songs. They've got some new material coming out, and I'm drumming on all of it. That's really exciting for me, really exciting for you guys if you're a fan of Wake Up Hate. And then as far as this video, what are we gonna be doing? At the point in which I am in my setup right now, this would be a great time to take you guys through how I actually set the microphones up when miking this kit. I'm at the point where the snare drum I set up, the toms, they didn't need much work today. I just worked a little bit the batter heads on both of them, dialed those in, and then the kick drum just finger tight as always. So the actual kit is tuned. I have all of my cymbal stands where I want them. I have the cymbal config for this Wake Up Hate track. I have it all set up based on what I've prepared in MIDI. So I know, if, for example, that I will be using a China. I just need two crashes and a crash ride for the actual chorus. I'm gonna be using in the bridge, there's this little bit of a splash and then there's a couple sections that have a stack for some fills. So I've got everything set up here. Now what I'm gonna be taking you through is all the stands are set up in place to mic everything and I'm just gonna be taking you through my mic choices and how I'm gonna actually be putting those in place to actually capture both the shells and the cymbals best I can for the recording that I will be sending off to Jake when I'm done. So the products I'll be taking you through in this video, everything as always is listed in the description down below. I have all the microphones I use listed there. I have the stands I use. I have all the symbols. I have the hardware, the kit itself. It's all listed down below. I want to leave a huge, huge special thank you to Earthworks because all the microphones I will be using in this video are Earthworks microphones and they're the ones who really hooked me up and set me up with the current mic set that I use for this session work. So huge shout out to Earthworks. Uh, thank you for supplying these microphones. Let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to start with is the kick drum. I'm going to be miking it with a kick in and a kick out and let's do that now. When miking my kick drum, I simply use two SR20LS kick microphones. I'm gonna put one on the inside close to the batter head to capture as much attack and punch from the beater as possible. Then I'm gonna put one on the outside in hopes of capturing more low end. After setting up the kick mics, I'm going to move to the snare drum where I will be capturing this drum with three separate microphones. On top, I'm going to be using a SR25 and a DM20 and then another DM20 for the snare bottom. When positioning the capsules for these two microphones for the snare top, what I'm looking for here is a direct pathway to the center of the drum and then what I want is above the rim of the drum about a three finger distance between the rim of the snare drum and the capsule itself. Huge shout out to Chris Gazelle, you can check out his channel down below. I learned a lot about setting up microphones and miking my own kit through his videos and one on one help with him. On the rack tom I'm going to be using another DM20. We now come to the floor, and on the floor tom I'm going to be using another DM20. I'm going to point the capsule at the center of this drum with about three finger distance from the edge of the drum up to the capsule. I'm going to be using the rear rejection of the DM20 to filter out the china symbol and the two crash symbols that are very close in proximity to this floor tom. So me personally, when I'm setting up my microphones, you've kind of seen the order, it's pretty simple. I start at the kick, I guess this is kind of intuitive, and I move to the snare drum, then the rack tom, then the floor tom. And then after that, I do the left overhead, then the right overhead, then I close mic any cymbals that I'm going to be close micing, moving from left to right around the kit. So now what you're seeing me do is set up my left overhead. For overheads, I'm gonna be using two SR314s. Last thing I do once the overhead is in position is I'm gonna take a measuring tape, and I'm gonna check that there's a five foot distance between the center of my snare drum and and the capsule in the left overhead and the right overhead when both of these microphones are in place. As I said, I'm now going to switch to closed miking. I'm going to start on the left side of the kit with the splash symbol. I'm going to be miking this symbol with an SR25. For the sessions that I'll be going into this week, I'm going to be actually closed miking every symbol and every element of the drums. Despite this being overkill, the big reason why I want to do this is just to give my clients as much control as possible when I send them the stems and they can adjust any of the elements individually onto themselves and process those elements how they choose. 
skipping over the hi-hat, the next symbol we're gonna hit is the left crash symbol. The way I'm gonna set this up is gonna be with another SR25. I'm putting about a four finger gap between the capsule and the symbol itself. It's a little close, you can back it off if you want, but I'm not too, too worried about this because I do have those two overheads that are primarily gonna be most of the symbol mix. Left to right, the next closed mic element we're gonna talk about is my 12 inch Classic Customs Dark Stack that I have directly north of my rack tom at the moment. There's not really a whole lot to say here though. I'm gonna use another SR25. I'm gonna put the microphone directly below the symbol, pointing directly up at the symbol with about a four finger gap. And I'm going to make sure that the microphone's capsule is not at all pointing in the direction of the rack tom. Although it doesn't really matter a whole lot simply because usually you're not gonna play those two elements at the same time. The next element we come to for closed miking is gonna be my polyphonic ride. This is a 21 inch symbol made by Mino. I'm gonna be miking it from below with another SR25. I'll be pointing the microphone on an angle up towards the bell that's tilted away from the snare drum and the other toms. We've just got two more elements to close mic. We've left the polyphonic and now we're on to my right crash symbol. Currently, this is a 19 inch medium thin crash, another Mino Byzant symbol. We've come to the final element that I will be close miking for this session. This is a 19 inch AA Holy China by Sabian. I'm gonna be miking this again with another SR25 pointed at the bell. The only difference for this one in comparison to the crash symbols is actually the stand. I'm not using a boom this time. I am using this simple little clip that attaches to the actual symbol stand itself. The reason why honestly is because I ran out of booms. I would have liked to put this on a boom stand, but what are you gonna do? I have to hit the music store and grab some more hardware it seems. There we have it, we're all mic'd up. Next thing I'm gonna move on to is cabling, and I'm gonna take a brief second to mention that the only microphone you actually saw me cable here today in this video was the kick in. The reason why I did that is usually I position all of the stands first, then I set up all the microphones on the stands, then I cable all the microphones themselves, and I leave the cables at the base of the microphones. After every cable is at a base of a microphone stand, I run the cables then to my interfaces. The reason why the only mic that I actually cabled in advance was the kick in is because it's very difficult to get the cable into the kick drum to cable this mic after positioning it. So I do both of those in one step. Okay guys, so there you have it. Before I close out this video, I wanna leave you with a couple of closing points. Uh, first of all, I've used a lot of microphones in this setup today for what I'm gonna be tracking. Uh, I don't usually use all of my microphones like I have currently at the kit. The reason why I'm using all of them today, and as you saw in that video, that there's a lot of closed miking on all the cymbals. The reason why I'm doing that is just so that I can give as much control to Jake as possible. If he wants to manipulate basically anything at the kit now, he has complete control. We have three mics on the snare. I've got one one closed mic SR25 on all of the cymbals. I've got uh, two mics on the kick. I mean, he has complete control from any angle when he's actually mixing this. So that's the idea there. I'm sure he won't use every mic. He's probably not gonna really use the closed mics on the crashes. I can't imagine that being too important. The crash ride's gonna be really important, this guy, because of where it sits in the kit relative to the overheads. So if I want this guy to really come through, especially for those choruses, I have to have this SR25 on it. So this guy, this mic down here actually is an overkill. So, but yeah, you get the idea there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can check out all the products that I use at the drum set in my studio. You can everything, literally everything to the foam on the wall you can find down in the description. So definitely check that out. With that being said, you can connect with me further at my social medias. They're on the page for you right now. And then as always in the description below, if you're from a band or you're in a band or you want to be in a band or you're writing music and you need a drummer or you need something that I can help you with, maybe writing drum parts, maybe tracking drum parts that are already written, whatever it is, make sure to hit me up on my email sessions at whitestab.com and we can arrange that. Lastly, as I close out, I want to leave a huge, huge thank you to Earthworks Microphones, Earthworks Audio for their incredible support and for sending out all of these absolutely amazing microphones. So a huge shout out to Earthworks and I will see you guys all very soon with something new.